We're here at MEF 19 in downtown Los Angeles, California, and we're wrapping up day two. We have had an interesting conference, and earlier today I spoke with my colleagues, Jennifer Clark and Sterling Perrin from Heavy Reading, and we talked about edge computing, cloud computing, and how MEF ties into all of that stuff and the future of uh, carrier to carrier connectivity. So we did this project and it will be, uh, it'll be published as a white paper, so it'll be available for, for free uh, for anybody who wants to download it in December. Okay. Uh, we did it in partnership with, with MEF, mm -hmm. uh, and I presented some of the research here. One of the interesting things is we surveyed, uh, there are 125 operators, respondents globally, 52 of them were from MEF membership. Okay. And so there were interesting comparisons between globally how operators are viewing things versus uh, the MEF members. Oh. And one of the things that came through was about 40, so we asked the operators, uh, where are you in terms of rolling out SD-WAN services, managed SD-WAN, about uh, 45, 47% said they're implementing them now. Mm -hmm. So that shows yeah, SD-WAN is more than hype, it's being rolled out. It's traction, But the yeah. interesting thing was, um, about three quarters of the MEF membership have already rolled out SD-WAN. So the uh, membership, you know, MEF goes back to Ethernet, of course, and its heritage, but right. uh, these members are very engaged and, and clearly early adopters okay. in rolling out uh, SD-WAN generally. And so they're a good barometer for, you know, some of the data that you see where MEF members are, are different results from the, the group overall. You can see where, where the industry will go. My suspicion is as the general population gets more um, deeper involved, they'll, they'll start heading more in a MEF uh, direction on, on some of these topics we asked about. In a way, we're operating a little bit of a bubble here because it's all carrier related. Uh, you know, it's not as if we're seeing AWS and, and Google booths here. And that, um, if you looked at some of the survey results that the MEF genera uh, generated in, in their uh, recent work with, uh, with light reading slash heavy reading, mm -hmm. um, there's, uh, and also some of the stuff that we've seen w uh, from uh, an enterprise perspective with those surveys. Right. There's, a, there's an interest in the part of the enterprises to work with the cloud providers a lot for SD-WAN. Uh, right. And yet on the, on the service provider side, mm -hmm. they are looking to add value to their connectivity s services by augmenting them with higher value uh, capabilities that are part of the SD-WAN overlay. And that is critical for the service providers. Okay. But the question is, um, where do the cloud providers play in this whole MEF ecosystem? Right. You know, right now we have uh, about 50 carriers signed up for the LSO standards, mm -hmm. uh, for the lifecycle service orchestration standards, and what we really need is for the cloud providers to step up and also uh, become part of that ecosystem. Are they going to do that, or are they going to say, hey, uh, we really don't have to? And I think mm -hmm. that's going to be really critical moving forward, is to make sure that, A, the service providers are stepping up to uh, providing more value-added services, not right. con just connectivity, right. and B, that we bring the cloud providers into this whole um, uh, MEF uh, LSO ecosystem. The critical importance of the cloud um, contingency, cloud providers, yeah. in the future of, of SD-WAN and for you know, all of these services going forward, um, and the fact that that's a, a significant challenge for the MEF uh, group going forward, it's a group of, as I said, very strong network operators. Um, there has not been strong cloud participation historically. We don't see a lot of cloud participation here. And right. it really came up with this board level member uh, panel that it's, it's a very big deal for them going forward to get cloud providers involved um, in the event and in these standards because right now the cloud providers, you know, to, to be blunt, they just don't care about this kind of work. Right. Right. Operators it, do, cloud doesn't, but if the cloud right. doesn't, it's going to limit. It, yeah, it, it, it limits the type and the, and the uh, trajectory of what kind of services you can make available to enterprises, and, mm -hmm. and what good is it to say, you know, here we have these, uh, these assured services over here, and then we have these other services, because they touch the cloud, they're, they're a little bit different. <laughs> yeah, exactly, and so the thinking among the, the MAF and, and the panel is that as these cloud services become more and more towards mission critical types of services, then the cloud customers will go to the cloud guys and the cloud guys will come back to, to groups like the MEF and, and ask right. for some help. But 
Yeah, um, it, it, it does present uh, at least a fork in the road in terms yes. of uh, where, where, where this stuff sort of sorts itself out in the marketplace. Right. Um, and we can't, uh, uh, and all we can do is speculate at this point. It is, <laughs> right. It's certainly not here yet. It's, it was identified as a problem, I think, okay. and, and then we'll see where it goes.